actually Smart Summon has arrived, and I've been putting it through its paces to say the least. It also marks a pretty historic moment for this channel, because for the first time, there will be no one in the driver's seat for the entire video. But before we get into Costco stress testing, I think we need a brief history lesson on Summon, because as many of you will point out, it's not exactly a new feature. The original Smart Summon worked by using basic maps for planning combined with ultrasonic sensors to detect objects around it and not crash into anything. I kind of like to think about it like a bug with antennae that navigates the world by feel. This was mostly a party trick, and it's pretty obvious if you ever used it that it lacks real intelligence, and also struggled in situations where the ultrasonic sensors didn't have a good understanding of their surroundings. It didn't care about road laws or driving etiquette, it just always took the path of least resistance to get to you, so not exactly smart like the name would suggest. Actually, Smart Summon changes this. One of the first things I did was put it into a bit of a tricky situation where I was standing at the edge of this roundabout to see if it would turn left to come get me like Old Summon would have, but instead it did the correct thing and took the super long path all the way around the roundabout. Definitely some new intelligence under the hood here. And in addition to new intelligence, you also get a live view that you can see on the app that shows you what the car is seeing as it drives around. And as you could probably notice, it is moving a little bit slow. Six miles an hour is the max for this first release. And while six miles an hour is typically fine for most parking lots, it does feel a bit slow on a road like this, but I can definitely understand why it has this limitation. And even pulling off the side of the road a little bit before coming to a full stop and turning on the hazards to let me in. Absolutely incredible. Some quirky behavior that I did not expect is that any time its first move is to go forward, it will actually back up ever so slightly to make sure that there's nothing in front of it before proceeding, which I actually think is a really smart way to deal with that small blind spot since it doesn't use ultrasonic sensors anymore and relies on cameras only. And just look at that three point turn. I cannot wait for full self-driving to get these abilities. Another thing I didn't expect is the sheer distance that it's able to go with no driver. Old Summon would stop abruptly after about 400 feet, saying the maximum distance has been reached, but this one keeps going and going and going. I'm actually playing a bit of a hide and seek game with the car here by holding the come to me button and then running away. And even though it's limited to six miles an hour, I really did have to run for it not to catch me, which shows me just how screwed I am if the car decides it hates me and it turns into a Terminator type situation. I was starting to think there was no limitation on distance at all, but there is. And here you can see the car stop and I got a message on the phone saying the max distance was reached but it does seem to be very lenient with what it considers out of bounds. You can see the target on the phone is where I want it to go, which requires heading in the opposite direction because it's a one-way road. Does a good job waiting for the car behind to pass before pulling out of its parking spot. And then you can see even as the target becomes out of range, the car continues driving to it, which is a very welcome change. And I gotta say, it is absolutely amazing to see it doing things like properly stopping at this sign and just driving along. Even though I've shown it doing much more amazing things, when there's no one in the car, it somehow feels very different. Here's another example where I set the destination pin right on the edge of what's allowed where the car is going to have to go well out of bounds to get there and it does no problem as long as you're standing somewhere inside the blue circle and keeping an eye on the car it doesn't really seem to care at all that it's heading to a destination that's technically out of bounds it's also obviously tuned to be very safe around pedestrians you can see this little bit of a pinch point here and instead of going around it just comes to a complete stop and of course, with me being me, I couldn't help myself but do a little reflex testing. Surprisingly quick reaction time, actually. And after that move, it opted to not go down the same parking aisle that I was walking down, even though that probably would have gotten it to its destination a little quicker. Might have been a little bit nervous about me, and I can't really blame it. The last clip we're going to take a look at in this area before we head over to Costco is a really good example of it thinking on the fly. The target that I chose may be a little bit hard to see on the little phone there because it's behind other icons, but I set it to the right-hand side of this roundabout. Now, keep your eye on the intended path here. As you can see, the car is currently trying to look for a way to pull off to the side of the road, which will get it close enough to pick us up. 
But once it sees the concrete barriers there and realizes it can't do that, it actually takes an entirely new route and drives all the way around the block to get to us. I feel like this is what smart summon should have been all along, because the first version definitely wasn't so smart, but in typical Tesla fashion, better late than never. And on to the real stress test, Costco. Now, Costco is a place where you really can't be overly polite while driving around, or else you're never gonna get anywhere. You can see it begin to back up a little bit when it was started to clear out, but there's also some more pedestrians behind us and also a car approaching very slowly. Hopefully you can see the tiny camera feed on the phone there, but it is pretty obvious that we're backing out of our spot. I mean, we're halfway out, but people just don't care if you don't take initiative, like this person who goes right by us. But honestly, at Costco, that's kind of expected, and that's actually the entire reason I brought it here. Then when it finally finds finds a gap in pedestrian and vehicle traffic, it does start backing out of the parking spot. There's also a person waiting for our spot in the car to our right. And you can see they give us a little bit of extra room so that we can swing wider here, which it takes full advantage of. You can see it swinging out pretty far there. Very human-like so far. You can also see all the pedestrians in the area don't even glance at the car. They have no idea there's no driver in the seat. And I think that's a pretty huge testament for just how fluidly and smooth it's getting through here. It drew no attention. Very well done. And I did forget to record my phone screen on this next one. So I think you're just going to have to take my word for it that it's in summon mode right now and I'm not driving it myself. This one had a lot of interactions with other traffic on the road, which I actually think is an area where actually smart summon shines versus pedestrian traffic. But we'll talk about that in a second. You can see it pulling right out with a fair bit of confidence here, even though there was another car approaching, but it was perfectly fine. Little hesitation afterwards, but absolutely no problem because traffic was piling up anyways. Little interaction with the car coming in from the right here where it's trying to figure out whose right away it is. You can see them creeping up, but it asserts itself, also waits and makes sure this car in front of us is going to stop and then proceeds again really nicely done pinch point situation where there's some carts off to the left and a truck to the right with a hitch and you can see we give the right of way to the car in front of us and right after they pass it squeezes its way through because it knew it was its turn to do so there was a lot of really small nuance to all of those situations and it surprised me how smoothly it was able to get through all that the last test I did though where I tried to summon it to the front door didn't exactly go as smoothly you can see it start to back up a little bit, but then kind of changes its mind when this car stops behind us. And when they leave, it did seem like a pretty good moment to back up, but it just stays perfectly still. Now this hardware four camera on the back here does see pretty wide range. So it may be detecting some other pedestrians and vehicles that are approaching in the distance but it ended up just getting straight stuck here. I'm gonna go ahead and let this whole thing play out at 8X speed and you can kind of keep your eye on the little camera down there to, or the visualization to see what's going on, but it was stuck. There was times where the steering wheel would kind of move a little bit, like it was getting ready to go for it. And then another group of pedestrians would show up or another car would show up. It just had a really difficult time getting out of this parking spot. It was actually taking so long that you can see I force closed the app and restart summon a couple times because I figured it had to be some kind of technical issue. But no, it ended up being just that there were so many people around and like you can see a truck behind us and people getting out and swapping drivers just costco stuff and the car never felt comfortable enough you might have even heard the lady next to us asking are you gonna reverse or not because she was excited to watch this lots of swearing lots of excitement but as you know in any product demo when there's a lot of people watching it is bound to go wrong it does do a pretty solid job of pulling out of the parking spot and being really casual around these pedestrians at least in the beginning You can see a lady loading in groceries into the back of her car and another car waiting for her spot with its wheels turned all the way to the left. Now, most people would just squeeze this gap, no problem here, but actually Smart Summon does not seem very confident in doing that. There definitely seems to be a huge bias towards pedestrian safety, and anytime there's pedestrians involved, I find that it gets pretty awkward like this. 
And it did start moving forward and it looked like it was about to try the turn, but then stops dead in its tracks when it notices some pedestrians approaching from behind us. After these pedestrians pass, it does make one more small move and kind of inches forward. And I think it's probably trying to show intention of where it wants to go, but it just does not feel comfortable driving by this lady so close to our right. And it again gets stuck here for so long that more pedestrians start approaching from behind, which makes it not want to move at all. This is where things honestly get pretty awkward. And if there was a car behind us, I definitely would have ran over to correct it, but it lucked out and there was no cars behind us in this moment. And in case things weren't awkward enough, it goes ahead and triggers automatic emergency braking for getting too close to this curb. You can hear the car absolutely skid to a stop and we have a message on the screen saying aborting to mitigate collision. Interesting to note that if you check out the car's cameras, we have about a foot of distance from the curb and it was actually gonna do that turn just fine. I mention that because Dirty Tesla had a very similar situation happen in his video, but then falsely claimed that it ran into the curb, probably because he likes to gatekeep these software releases and keep them all for himself. This is when things got too awkward to handle and I start walking back to the car, but suddenly summon started booting back up and you can see it reverse again to just double check there's nothing in front of the car since it was last awake and continue. It should have been a pretty good indication to me that it took five minutes to back out of the parking spot and it probably wasn't a good place to use summon, but hey, if you push the limits, this is what it gets you. And although the car did successfully get to me, it gets a D minus for this one at best. And despite being pretty embarrassed after that last one, I did do one more attempt to the front of the store, but it ended up being a gimme because there was no traffic around. So I'm just gonna use this time for a bit of a summary. I never really used the old Smart Summon on my Model S because it was honestly embarrassing and stressful. I'd say 80% of the time it was too awkward to handle and the other 20% of the time it was magical, but with those odds I never really used it. I think actually Smart Summon flips those percentages around and 80% of the time it is now feeling magical, but it still does have some awkward moments the other 20% of the time. Keep in mind, this is the very first release and I'm sure we're gonna see a ton of improvements in the very near future, but the main question I've been getting from people is, is this still a gimmick? And I think the answer to that all depends on how comfortable you are with rolling the dice. But when it comes to learning and building new skills, there's no need to leave it to chance. And that's where this video sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform that helps you master complex topics on just about anything you're interested in, including AI, math, physics, programming, data analysis, and so much more, all without any guesswork. These bite-sized lessons let you learn at your own pace with hands-on problem-solving skills that build a real understanding. This method of interacting with the lessons has been proven to be about six times more effective than just watching lecture videos, something I can definitely attest to. You can spend just a few minutes a day on these lessons and not only make yourself more knowledgeable in all kinds of areas, but also make yourself a better thinker in general. You can get everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days and also get 20% off their annual premium subscription by using my special link in the description. And a big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Until next time, everybody. Bye.